Kylie Cheer here, host of the Witch Money Podcast. Join us each week as we bring you the best experts and top advice to help you make the most of your money. From property prices to budgeting, investment platforms to pensions, we'll be here to keep you informed. Here's a taste of what you can expect. If you had invested £100 in the fund three years ago, you'd have just £61 today. Gosh. Is it worth trusting a website that you don't know to save that 10p, that 20p. The good news is it does look like we're hovering around the top of the interest rate hike cycle. If I asked you what you earned here, you'd be absolutely horrified because we're told we should not talk about money. Make sure to join us for new episodes every Friday and I'll see you then. Hello and welcome to the Witch Shorts podcast. I'm Rob Lilly Jones. Welcome along if discovering new podcasts was your New Year's resolution and you're listening for the first time. And of course, welcome back to any of our long-time listeners to the podcast. In this week's episode, we're hearing more about your rights when investments go wrong in an article originally written by Megan Thomas for our Money magazine. As I mentioned on last week's episode, for the next few weeks we'll be handing over the reins to our old, or should that be new, friend, AI, as they read Megan's brilliant piece. And we'd love to know what you think. Send us your feedback to podcasts at witch.co.uk. That's podcasts at witch.co.uk. Well, let's get on with today's podcast. Investing and risk go hand in hand. Returns are never guaranteed, and you can't expect to be reimbursed for poor performance. Yet there's a gulf between the value of your portfolio taking a dip and waking up to find your money's gone or out of reach, perhaps for years. While the collapse of cryptocurrency exchange FTX dominates the news, the fall of London Capital and Finance and the Woodford Equity Income Fund may be more familiar to many which members. Some of you have experienced investment failures firsthand. Of the 671 investors we surveyed in October 2023, 14% have had at least one investment fail. For example, holding shares in a company that went bust. Sometimes, investors' options are limited, but for others, there's a labyrinthine array of overlapping agencies covering investments and avenues for getting your money back. Here, we map the protections in place and what to check before investing. Investing in regulated assets means you can assume certain protections will apply. If they work, you may not have to turn to compensation schemes in the first place. When you invest through an investment platform that's regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority or the FCA, your investments are held separately from the platform's own assets. This is known as ring fencing and it means your money won't be used to repay creditors if the platform goes bust. Investment funds have a specific governance structure where the fund manager has three levels of oversight, the Authorised Corporate Director, or ACD, the Depository, and the Custodian. The ACD scrutinises the running of the fund and should be able to pay out any liabilities if investors want to withdraw their money. The depository is independent from the ACD and oversees its work to make sure it follows regulations. The custodian is responsible for the safekeeping of investors' assets. If a fund is performing particularly poorly or there is a problem with cash flow, the ACD can suspend it. This gives the fund manager a chance to fix what's gone wrong. That could be reshuffling assets or the ACD can replace the manager but it means investors can't withdraw their money, which could mean they lose confidence in the fund. Sometimes these protections fail, as in the case with Neil Woodford's Equity Income Fund. It was suspended by the ACD, in this case Link Fund Solutions, on the 3rd of June 2019, after it didn't have enough capital to cope with a large withdrawal from the Kent County Council Pension Fund. In October 2019, Link decided to close the fund, quote, because there was insufficient certainty about how long it would take to reposition the fund's portfolio in a way that would enable the fund to meet redemption requests by investors. 
This began years of wrangling over how much money investors would get back and when. The protection provided by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme isn't widely understood by investors. We asked which members who invest whether the FSCS would cover them if a range of companies went bust. These included a firm they held shares or bought bonds from, a fund or trust they owned, a fund manager or the only correct answer if their investment platform went under. Just 17% picked investment platforms, while 49% said they didn't know. The ring fencing of your assets from those of an investment platform should protect you from creditors, but the insolvency administrator can still access your account to cover shortfalls. If this occurs, you'd get up to £85,000 back from the FSCS. The limited scope of FSCS cover can cause confusion. If, for example, publicly listed platform Hargreaves Lansdowne were to go under, Hargreaves Lansdowne investors would be covered, but Hargreaves Lansdowne shareholders wouldn't be. Customers who've invested, or who were advised to, may be able to claim compensation from the FSCS if the provider or advisor has gone out of business, but this only applies for some types of FCA authorized assets. Check on the FCA's website that a firm is covered by the FSCS and don't take the firm's word for it. When mini-bond provider London Capital and Finance went bust in January 2019, bondholders assumed that as the firm was FCA authorised, it would be FSCS protected. But as mini-bonds aren't regulated by the FCA, the FSCS largely refused to pay out. This didn't apply to those who were incorrectly advised to buy their mini-bonds by financial advisors. In the six months to October 2023, the FSCS reported that 8 out of 10 customers with investment claims received their decision within 10 months. This is the time from an application submission to the date the FSCS sends out a decision letter. Regulators and governments can step in to help investors, but this can involve long waits and painful compromises. In Woodford's case, the FCA compelled Link Fund Solutions to enter a consumer redress scheme to repay more than 300,000 customers, a total of £235 million. These schemes can simplify and speed up the claims process for investors because there's a specific process in place for a group of people in the same situation. However, it's possible for the total pot available for the redress scheme to be worth less than financial ombudsman service or FSCS support, which you would no longer be able to use. Nor can you take a firm to court. Schemes can take a long time. Woodford investors are still waiting for money back. In the case of London Capital and Finance, the government took the extraordinary step of funding a one-off compensation scheme, this was driven by a report that criticised the FCA's supervision of London Capital and Finance. But individual bondholders only got 80% of their initial investment back, up to £68,000. The FOS allows you to raise a complaint about a company's handling of your investments. It's free and has a higher ceiling for repayment than the FSCS, up to £415,000 but if you accept its judgment, you can't take legal action. You need to complain to the company in question first, and only if you're dissatisfied with its responses can you escalate complaints to the FOS. Issues with firms that have gone bust need to go straight to the FSCS. In 2022 to 2023, there were 14,098 investment-related complaints, of which 36% were upheld, with complaints about mini-bonds most often upheld. That figure was 86%. You can complain about dodgy advice from a regulated financial advisor if they recommended an unregulated product or ignored your risk appetite in their advice. But if your advisor recommends an investment to you in good faith and it loses money or collapses, you won't be compensated. Legal action could work if your problem isn't covered by existing protections, such as a misleading share prospectus, or if you're not happy with a collective redress scheme, as is the case for many Woodford investors. Going to court will never be a quick win and claims can take years, a problem exacerbated by mounting court backlogs. It's also expensive. For widespread failings, Lawyers can organise collective action against the relevant companies, including fund managers, 
ACDs, and even platforms. However, these legal costs will usually be very high, so take time to think about whether this might be the best course of action. Thank you so much to Megan Thomas for that original piece originally published in the December issue of our Money magazine. And don't forget to tell us what you thought of what you've just heard too. Send your feedback to podcasts at which.co.uk. And remember, you can find more articles you'll find useful every day on everything from money and technology to home and garden advice by signing up to one of our many free email newsletters. And you can do that at which.co.uk forward slash newsletters. We'll be back next week for another episode of Which Shorts. And thanks for listening. Which Shorts was produced by me, Rob Lilly, while the exec producer was Angus Farker. It's Grace here to tell you all about our new podcast at Witch. It's called Get Answers, and you can listen now on whatever platform you like. Me and co-host Harry will be with you every other Monday, with episodes dropping each fortnight as we help you solve life's everyday problems. Whether it's getting the most from your weekly shop, finding travel hacks to save on your family holiday, or simply learning the tricks that make your everyday life easier. And we'll be joined by the very best experts too. Just search Get Answers and subscribe so that you can catch our episodes as soon as they drop.